Good evening, everyone. We'll be looking at Stirling cycle. So first of all, a Stirling engine is a heat engine that is operated by the cyclic compression and expansion of air or other gas at different temperatures, resulting in a net conversion of heat energy to mechanical work. So Stirling engine uses the temperature difference between its hot end and cold end to establish a cycle of a fixed mass of gas heated and expanded and cooled and compressed. The greater the temperature difference, the greater will be the work output of the engine. The application of Stirling engine for power generation. In solar thermal applications, a Stirling engine could theoretically achieve close to 40% energy conversion efficiency. Now the best so far recorded is 32%, which is still high for solar conversion. Now in order to obtain high power output and efficiency, it is necessary to keep the compression ratio of the engine as high as possible. In Stirling engines, the typical value of compression ratio is about 2. So now, this is the PV diagram for Stirling cycle. And this would be the TS diagram for the Stirling cycle. So it consists of four processes. Okay, it consists of four thermodynamics processes. First, from state point one to two, so you can see from state point one to two, this is isothermal and it is a compression process. So from state point one to two, we call it as an isothermal compression process. And then from state point two to three, this is a constant volume process. So, and it is the constant volume heat supply or heat addition here from state point three to four, where you can see the increase in entropy from S3 to S4 here. Then after that, you have three to four, where you have the isothermal expansion. So this three to four here or this three to four here, as you can see from this PV diagram, the volume increases while the temperature remains constant. Then from four to one, you have constant volume, okay, heat rejection. So based on your PV diagram, you can see four to one here, this is a constant volume process. And then from four to one here, Okay, so you can see there is a decrease in entropy. So from this, we can say it is a constant volume cooling process or heat remover. So we move to problem solving now. So from the question, an ideal Stirling cycle using A has at the beginning of the isothermal compression, a pressure, volume, and temperature of 110 kPa, 0 0.05 meter cube volume, and 30 degrees C temperature. Now, the minimum volume of the cycle here is given as 0 0.005 meter cube, and the maximum temperature is equal to 700. So remember, you have to add it with 273. Now determine for the cycle network, network done 
or network output. Then part B, the thermal efficiency. They have given us the specific gas constant of 0.289 kJ per kgk and the specific heat at constant volume of 0.718 kJ per kgk. So first thing is to draw the PV and TS. So this is our PV and TS diagram. And then from these values here, okay, we get it placed in the table that prepared here in red. So it's 1.10 kPa, uh, sorry, 1.10 bar, which is 110 kPa. And then the volume is 0 0.05 meter cube. Temperature 30 plus 273, so you have 303 Kelvin. Then the question has given us the minimum volume of 0 0.005. So it says compare, there is two volume limits here, position. One is based on what I have shown here, and the other one is the minimum volume, which is V2 or V3. So V2 and V3, both you have 0 0.005 and for 0.3, the same. So, and then for state point 0.4 and 1, because state point 0.4 and 1, as you can see, is also a constant volume process. So you have the same volume for state point 0.1 and 4. Then they have given us a temperature. It is the lower temperature. This is the highest temperature. So the greater the temperature difference between the hot and the hot reservoir and the cold reservoir will be much better. So the lower temperature is 303, which is 0.1 and 2 here. Yeah. State point 0.1 and 2. And 973 for state point 0.3 and 4, which is the hot reservoir and the cold reservoir for a sterling cycle. So based on the data given, what we can do is to find out the mass. Okay, so from state point one itself, you can see they have given us pressure, volume, and temperature. So we can use the ideal gas law of PV equals to MRT, where the pressure is 1.1 bar, so which is equals to 1.1 times 10 to the power of 2, okay, kilo. And then the volume of 0 0.05 mass is unknown with a specific gas constant of 0.289 kilojoules per kgk. And then the temperature in absolute uh, that uh, is in Kelvin. Okay, so you have 303 Kelvin. So from this, you can find out the mass of 0 0.0628 kg. Okay, so once you have found out the mass, for state point one, then maybe you can move to state point two, three, and four after that to find out the pressure P2, P3, and P4. If the question wants us to find all the pressure, volume, and temperature of each point, so we can find out the pressure P2, P3, and P4. Okay, so state point two first, again, I do guess law, okay, from the equation, okay, we substitute the values of state point two, then we will be able to find the pressure P2, which is 11 bar. And the same thing for state point three, which you have to find out the pressure P3 will be 5.3. So pressure P3 as a subject, so you get 35.3 bar. Then you move on to state point four. So from this, you can find out P4, okay, which is 3.53 bar here. So the first part of the questions, they ask us to find out the network done. So to find out the network done, of course, we have to know the heat supply and the heat rejected. So the heat supply is from state point three to four. The heat rejected is from state point one to two for a sterling cycle, okay? So if let's say, for example, you want to find the heat from state point one to two, then you have to find the area under the process path of a TS diagram from state point one to two, 
which shows you that this is the heat rejected and this is the heat supply due to the increasing entropy. So to find the heat supply, then we have to take the area below the process path from three to four, which you have the height multiplied by the base as well. So the base of the TS diagram is actually referring to the change of entropy. So this change of entropy here is actually referring to a constant temperature process. And as we know, change of entropy for, a, for an isothermal process can be found by taking R ln P max over P min or you can also put V min over V max. Okay, so since we know the mass, so we include the mass. By referring to this, we will be able to find out the change of entropy. Okay, for the process state point one to two and also state point three to four. Okay, you can prove, okay, you can prove by recalculating this again based on three to four, it will give you the same value of 0 0.01418 kilojoules per kgk. So the next part, okay, once we have found out the change of entropy, then we will be able to find out the heat supply, the area below three to four, and he rejected the area below the process bar for one to two. So that is given by this equation here. So once we have found out the change of entropy, then you take the change of entropy multiplied by the height here. So you can either take T3 or T4, which is the same. So that is 973. So you will be able to find out the heat supply for this Stirling cycle. Then you move on with for heat rejected, so which is from state point one to two. So the same thing here is to find out this area. So you've got 12.6 kilojoules. So once you've got heat supply and heat rejected, this should be heat, reje uh, heat rejected, okay? So you will be able to find out the network out. So the network out simply take heat supply minus heat rejected based on energy balance. So the heat supply is 40.66 and the heat rejected is 12.6. So you get network out of 28.06. So now, if let's say, for example, you want to find the thermal efficiency now. So what you can do is you can straight away take the network out here divided by the heat supply times 100%. So from this, you can see the efficiency, the thermal efficiency of the Stirling cycle is relatively high, is relatively high, okay? So you, you can use this equation again. If let's say, for example, you want to try by taking a different, uh, by taking difference temperature. So let's say, for example, you try to take uh, T1, T2 at lower and T3 T4 at a higher temperature. So you can check when the temperature difference is larger, what would be the thermal efficiency? What we can say is the larger the difference between the temperature of the hot reservoir and the cold reservoir, the larger the difference, the larger the temperature difference, the greater will be the thermal efficiency. Okay, so thank you and stay safe.